Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. I've got some excellent news, especially if you are an indie developer, and that is that FMOD, the popular authoring audio tool out there, is now free for indie game development. That is correct. So if you want to use FMOD, as long as you hit certain uh, revenue criteria, you can use it completely free in as many games as you want. So we don't really have a story to go with here. All we have is this tweet from earlier today, and it says, Great news for indies. In an effort to make licensing simpler, FMOD Studio is is now free for commercial use without yearly limits. Release as many games as you want, as long as your overall yearly revenue is less than 200,000 USD. For more information, go to the fmod.com forward slash legal. So that is really all we've got, the details here. So let's go in, jump in, and take a look at the legal, and then we'll follow it up with, uh, if you're wondering what the heck is an fmod, I'll get to that a little bit later in this video. So here we go, fmod. Uh, the big key thing here is under the fmod studio engine here. Um, is grants you the right to use FMOD Studio Engine for personal, hobbyist, educational, or non-commercial use only subject to the following, blah, 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 blah. The one we actually care about is commercial use. This this one right here, EULA -E -U grants you the right to use FMOD Studio Engine for commercial use subject to the following. Development budget of the project is less than $500,000. Total gross revenue slash funding per year for the developer before expense is less than $200,000. And FMOD Studio Engine is integrated and redistributed in a game application only. FMOD Studio Engine is not distributed as part of a game engine or tool set. Project is registered in your profile page at FMOD slash profile. And the um, product includes attribution in accordance with Clause 3. So if you use FMOD, you have to acknowledge the fact you used FMOD. You can't be well-funded. So if you have a half a million dollar budget for your game or higher, you don't qualify. And if you gross a total amount of more than $200,000 a year USD, then you have to pay the licenses as well. So a little bit more detail here. What is revenue? The kind of getting into the weeds on that. We don't really care that much. Ditto for budget, uh, what those specifically actually mean. Uh, commercial use there as well. There are some exemptions here. So if you are working on location-based entertainment, so um, game kiosks on site stuff, that kind of thing, simulators, embedded systems, installation and game systems slash casinos, you, you don't qualify under those. There's a different license there. Um, so as long as you make under that 500K, you are good to use the free indie license. Is there a difference between the license levels? All features of FMOD are available to all users. There is a difference in the level of support included with the license. Uh, the option to waive the logo requirement is available with basic and premium licenses. So it sounds like the attribution part via a logo is going to be enforced on indie users. So that's pretty good on the whole here. Here is the traditional FMOD pricing. So you get an idea of the kind of... Um, savings you're going to have here from the indie. So this hasn't been updated yet. It's still showing the old pricing of $2,000 per title. Uh, this still exists actually for, I guess, a very small segment of the population in that you could have a budget under 500K, but revenue over 200K, then you'd fit into the indie category. But generally you're looking at $5,000 to $15,000 for a license. So free is definitely a nice thing. So that is kind of the idea here. Let's go hands-on now with Studio, give you a bit of an idea of what it's all about. So what you could do is basically author all of the sounds into your uh, game settings, and then this optimizes a game-ready output and you have an SDK or integration into your game engine of choice. We'll get back to that in just a few minutes. But uh, what you're doing is basically setting up soundscapes or, or things. So here's an example from their ex actual examples, uh, a bunch of events here. So you can have simple ones such as a UI. When the cancel button is hit, we'll go ahead and do this. <laughs> Nothing really that exciting here. At the same time, we could also set up a very complicated uh, traffic environment here. So you see here, we've got traffic, traffic pad, pass by, horns, trains, all of this stuff working together. And then we can even throw in some events that'll trigger and handle different things. And then this one is gonna be much more complex. Here you're hearing trains, the ambient sounds of a city, all of these things work together. You've also got the ability to move around in 3D and see how these various things will all work together for you. Um, or you can get into something like for your character. And let's, where is walking? Uh, inter, oh, is it interactables? Nope. Mm, one second. 
Oh, it's right in front of me. Carrot player footsteps. So here you can see an example set up ready for a game where you have this uh, audio set up for the player walking around. You're going to notice here we have a bunch of different ones defined. So we got carpet, grass, wood floor all set up. So here you see carpet, grass, wood floor. And then you can go ahead and use those in your game and then have the logic of your game figure out what kind of a surface you're walking on. So it's more than just, you know, composing a bunch of audio together, which it also does. It actually kind of works like a DAW mixer for game uh, audio and so on. Uh, but it also can handle things like um, setting it up for multiple languages, multiple different areas and so on. You'll see us down here, we've got the locale support here. Um, you can do a ton of different configurations here. You, you set various different features up. So here, for example, is a barrel roll or collisions. You can handle the music in your game by level. So you see here, there's a lot of uh, mixing and integration and, and, and stuff that you can do uh, with uh, musical tracks as well. And then there again is a runtime aspect to this as well. So when you publish this out, your game can integrate. On top of that, they've also got fmod.io. You can think of that kind of like the mega scans of audio. It's a giant library of audio tracks available out there. You can see here out of the box, it's got integration into a couple of different game engines. And here we're looking now at some of the games that have used FMOD. And if you have never heard of FMOD before, that's actually kind of surprising because it has been used in so many games. So here we're looking at just a selection of FMOD games. It's kind of like a who's who of gaming. It's used everywhere from AAA to indie. Uh, so FMOD is definitely um, this and W Weiss. I got no idea how you actually say Wubble Weiss, uh, but those two solutions are probably the two most common dynamic game audio solutions out there. The output from FMOD Studio is going to be game optimized. And then you of course have the integration with your game engine of choice. In the case of FMOD, there is FMOD for Unity, which is interesting. They actually have a page here for FMOD for Unity, even though it's downloaded in the asset store, but they also have FMOD for Unreal Engine 4, uh, but they don't have the same kind of page. But as you can see, there is a full blown not well documented uh, documentation on how you can go ahead and use FMOD. One of the things you'll notice is it also supports like all the platforms that you might be interested in. Uh, and that's definitely one of the strengths of FMOD as well. So there is Unreal and there is Unity and integration with FMOD. There's also CryEngine support. And if you were wondering, yes, there is um, FMOD support for the Godot game engine. I don't know how well this will work. This was last updated in 2019 for this particular example that I found. And there's also a GD native version out there, but it's also last official release was a while back, uh, but there are more development happening in the master. So uh, this might be your best chance for getting FMOD Studio integration working in the Godot game engine. I, I will link this with everything else down below. So if you're using Godot, but you wanna have more advanced sound authoring and environment and so on, there are options out there uh, for integrating with FMOD. And again, I think this is the other one working. Yeah, so both, they forked off of you. Oh no, this is a different project completely as well. So this is straight out FMOD uh, integration, uh, but not GD native based. So if you want to use FMOD with the Godot game engine, it is an option there as well. Uh, so that is pretty much today's news. So um, licensing is now uh, much simpler for FMOD Studio. If you make um, less than 200,000 USD, uh, no matter how many games, you could publish 100,000 games that make a dollar or 75 a piece, and you were fine. Um, and you're also very tenacious, and my congratulations to you. Uh, but also, you can't be funded to the tune of more than 500,000 uh, USD. And that's it. If you want, you can go ahead and use FMOD in your project. Uh, there is out of the box uh, Unreal and Unity plugins available, and there are um, projects out there for supporting it in the Godot game engine. And I will link all of the relevant information in the linked article down below. So, what do you think of FMOD? Do you use something like this, or do you just use the sound integration that comes in Unity, Unreal, Godot, or whatever? Uh, let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.